All right, guys, so this time we've got Divine Belial here, and we're going to play around with it and see if there is any competitively viable combinations that we can do with this. We got multiple Divine Belials throughout Beyblade Burst Ultimate, and so we are going to try a lot of different combinations. In this particular video, we are going to be working with Perfect Belial, and we're going to be checking that out. So it is going to be using its full set of gears. We got all these cool looking gears and we're going to test them out in combination here and see what this bay can do. So let's take a look at it with itself fully geared up. First up, the VS gear is going to pop on to Adventure here that pulls in the two little segments, makes it a flat tip base with a round section. This is going to make it have some interesting movement patterns. It will no longer have that random gripping effect that those little red things did. It'll change up the use of this driver quite a bit. Next up, the D gear onto Nexus here. So the D gear adds a sting-like mechanic here that causes some twisting. Now what's gonna happen is as this rotates as fast as it can in the right spin direction from launch, Inertia and centrifugal force is going to twist this thing this way as it spins around. It's not gonna be able to keep up with the rotation because of that free spinningness, and it's going to get affected by the air pressure and be in that position. When it hits an enemy bay, it's not actually gonna move unless the enemy bay hits it on this side. That'll cause it to move for a second, and then that centrifugal force is going to push it backwards back into that original position there. That'll continue to happen as long as the speed it is spinning at is able to create that force and then once it starts to slow down hits may move this thing around randomly i don't think it quite works to the level that it was intended or hoping to be designed to do but it is still a very interesting attachment there onto nexus onto the divine blade the a gear has two different options here so the a gear can be attached as attack mode or as defense mode so in attack mode it is going to be locked in this way over here <laughs> So attack mode, you line the design of it up with the actual shape of the layer. So when you're holding it like this, you actually can't see any of the bits. And all that's doing is it is accentuating the strength of the smash points and making it more likely that contact is going to be made. Before, due to how high up the smash point is, it's possible the bay would go underneath and maybe hit over here, not quite ideally where you want that weight. So this will shore up that weakness there and make sure that you are hitting that smash attack and using the utilization of the weight point to cause a lot more damage. In defense mode, you swap it to the other side. So you spin it around the other way and lock it in. And now you're going to be able to see it. Let's lock that in. When you're holding it like this, you can see it sticking out here. That defense mode is going to change the shape of this bay from triangular to hexagonal and that will increase the defensive potential. It's going to remove some of the weakened points that are going to cause it to take too much recoil, and it's going to slow down a little bit on the aggressive side because of that change in shape. It will not be dealing as much damage, but it also won't be taking as much damage. I think right now, because of how we're going to be working with this, I'm going to lock this in to that defensive shape, I think. And we're going to try that out. So I'll go like that. And finally, we've got the H gear. So the H gear is a very interesting gear. It has two different modes, high mode and low mode. So let's check those out. This is a very weird gear. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly what it's going to do for the design and what, how it actually interacts with it, I should say. So we put this into low mode. We lock the core in on top. We take the silver section and we put it on the bottom and pop that in. And then we take this top section and we line it up this way. So you have to line it up the right way so that each of these sections here falls into the gap or else it won't lock in. And that is going to be the low mode version of this. And that is going to be pretty chunky, quite tall. And then it's adding weight sections into this section. I think this is ideal for when you're dealing with that, you're trying to go defensive and it's evening out the weight from these metal bits, putting more weight into these sections and getting it a little bit more weight distributed. If we lock it in the other way, this is where it gets weird. So this is going to be a high mode design, but it's gonna work a little bit different than several other high modes. And that is because of how this shape works when we lock it in, putting that in underneath. And then, oh, don't lock those in yet. 
Take this thing, flip it upside down, and you can lock it in on the bottom here. That is going to look pretty good there. And then if we were to turn this into a whole combo, This is a high mode design, but it doesn't have the gap. The gap is gone because of how the H gear and A gear interact here. And that is going to be very interesting in how it will interact as that. So high mode is not going to have some of the same weaknesses that a lot of high modes have because it doesn't have as significant of a gap. There's a slight gap there, but it is definitely stored up by that design and it's gonna work a little bit differently. So we're gonna check this thing out in a couple of battles and see what ultimate Divine Belial is able to do. All right, so let's see if there's much of a performance difference between high mode and low mode of Divine Belial in the perfect mode here. So we're going to battle this up against three competitive combos. We got ourselves a Guilty Longinus, a uh, Dynamite Plus a Valkyrie, and a Vanish Longinus. Up first, Guilty Bahamut. Three, two, one. Three. And knockout for Guilty. Three, two, one. Knockout for Divine. Three, two, one. Divine. Three, two, one. Knock out for guilty. All right, two to two. Three, two, one. And guilty does take the win there. But they were pretty evenly matched. They were doing all right, they were doing all right. Next up, Dynamite F Valkyrie on bearing. Three, two, one. Size is impressive. It can't maintain any aggressive movement. Yeah, you've got to get that first knockout. Three, two, one. So it's currently set up in a defensive kind of combination. in high mode, and it is easily getting spun out here. Three, two, one. Majorly defeated there. And it didn't do well enough against Guilty compared to how poorly it just did here. That very much raises concern. <laughs> See how it handles an opposite spin there. Three, two, one. I was hoping to hear with opposite spin battles, the big heft of it. If it can spin steal enough off of its opponent while being so heavy, eventually the opponent won't be able to rotate it. Uh, and it will get one final little bit at the end. That's the goal. That's the hope. Easy win over to Vanish. Hopes and dreams dashed. Three, two, one. And one last. Three, two, one. Don't see this going any different.
and Vanish takes all three easy victories there. So the high mode defensive style here from Divine did not work. Let's try it in its low mode attack style. All right, so A gear in attack mode, H gear on top now. So it is in its low mode, although it is still so chonky. Let's see how it handles the same gauntlet up against Guilty Bahamut. Three, two, one. <laughs> So instead of you making contact with the H and A gear, you made contact with the damaging wings this time. That did go over to Divine. Three, two, one. Most of the aggression is coming from Guilty and Divine is just moving in response. Three, two, one. <laughs> Nicely escorted out. Three, two, one. And bop right out there. Easily torn around and thrown about by Guilty. Up next is Valkyrie. Three, two, one. <laughs> See it trying to get the attack pattern, but it is too heavy for a rubber or a plastic base to get an attack pattern out of. Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. All right, three wins over to Valkyrie. We're seeing anything different here with Van. Three, two, one. I think we're just gonna see Vanish win this by quite a bit. And I'm just gonna call it there if that is the case. Give it up after one launch? Mm -hmm. Guess that means I'm the supreme ruler. The supreme ruler. Yeah. All right, so I would say, although it is a fun bay, it is interesting and really looks good, you cannot make perfect Divine Belial competitive. None of the combinations are able to keep up with anything in the current competitive meta, and this thing is just gonna end up toppling itself over. So that's what you get there if, if you try to work with. Bearing Drift. <laughs> well, then it wouldn't be perfect. <laughs> It'd be imperfect. Also, I don't think anything here gives us any kind of spin steal or interaction with something like Bearing Drift. Uh, its best bet would be to put on something like Extreme, maybe, and try and get a smash attack, but it's just not going to keep up with uh, Xiphoid or with Guilty in that field. So that's what we got going on here with Perfect Divine Belial. Just not quite able to keep up. It's a cool concept and worked way better in the show than it ever will in the actual arena. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll catch you guys next time.